Hi everyone, it's Tammy with Shabby Fabrics. I have the most adorable project for you today. This is a self-binding patchwork receiving blanket. I just absolutely love this collection when I saw it. This is Little Lammies by Bonnie Sullivan. It's such soft flannel. It's just amazing to work with. And I've loved every minute of making this adorable project. We love this collection so much, we actually have several projects in this collection. One is behind me, it's called Ellie's Pinwheels. Stay tuned, we'll have a video on that as well. So let's get started on this. This is so much fun. It is perfect for babies, babies that are coming. This is the perfect baby shower gift. I love that it's all beautiful, pastel colors, perfect for either baby, boy, or girl. So let me set this aside and I'm gonna show you how I did that. We have a limited number of kits. There's two charm packs, your backing, what you need to make that. And this comes with a free pattern download. It is available on our website. The link is in the description below. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I did, so I used a pre-cut on this. I used charm squares. So when you put your patchwork together, sometimes sewing with flannel can be a bit tricky. Um, I have a couple of tips for you. I shorten my stitch length. With flannel, this is gonna be a product that's gonna be washed many, many times. And so you want to kind of shorten your stitch length to strengthen that seam a little bit. I also pressed all of my seams open. You can see that here. So I used a design wall. We love this design wall by the Gypsy Quilter. We have these upstairs in the sewing studio and that's what we use to lay out all of our squares, get them where we want them, just play with your arrangement. That's what we did. I then just sewed them all together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Again, I did use that shortened stitch length and I pressed all of my seams open. So you can see here, all right. The next thing that I did on this is I took a basting stitch. A basting stitch is just a long stitch and all I did was baste it all the way around an eighth of an inch. That's just going to strengthen this because we're going to pull on this a little bit. We're going to pull and I didn't want these things to come apart. I didn't want my seams. Sometimes when you press seams open they tend to pop apart. So by stitching around it, I've stabilized this entire piece and now I'm ready to proceed to the next step. All right, so the next step, we're now gonna find the center of my quilt, my patchwork. And I'm gonna use a little mini wonder clip. I like the little mini ones. They're easy to see. If I put a pin in this, sometimes when you're moving around with a pin and you're flipping your fabric around, this pin will get lost and I need this to stay right here. That's why I'm using a wonder clip here. The little mini ones are really nice. They're skinny. There's a thousand uses for wonder clips. I should start a list actually of all the uses for wonder clips. I think you'd be surprised how many things I actually use a wonder clip for. Let me grab a couple more. Get all four edges marked. So I'm just folding this in half and marking the center of my patchwork. All right. All right, I'm going to set this to the side. Now I've pre-cut my backing ahead of time. This is the backing for my quilt. And it is cut larger than the quilt. So this is gonna look a little funny. But what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna mark the center all four sides of this. I'm gonna mark the center as well. All right, so now we have these all marked, all four corners or all four sides are marked. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my patchwork, and I'm gonna lay these right sides together, okay? Now, I'm gonna line up my wonder clips, remove one, and replace it with one. So now I know my center is perfect, right, on this edge. 
Okay, so now I'm going to pin this all the way down. So I'm just kind of flattening this out. I'm just smoothing this, getting it nice and flat. And I'm going to go ahead and use my fine patchwork pins for this step. But I'm just going to pin my seam allowances because I don't want those to turn when I stitch this together. That basting stitch will also hold that edge down so it's not going to flip when I go to it. All right, so very, very important. I'm going to take a friction pen and I'm going to take a ruler. I like this Creative Grids uh, four and a half by eight and a half. And I'm going to use the side that has this quarter inch mark on it. And I'm going to mark a quarter inch from this edge with my friction pen. This is where I'm going to start and stop sewing. Okay, so you can see my mark. I'm going to go ahead and put a pin right next to that. So I, I'm just going to let this backing overhang this. That's perfectly fine. I know that it's much larger, but I'm not trying to match this corner to this corner. I just need to match the center and pin out from the center. So let's do the same thing on the other side. Whoop, come back here. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Right, I'm going to go ahead and replace this with a pin. All right. Okay, and again on this side, I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to mark my quarter inch with a friction pen. Just like that. That is where I'm going to start and stop stitching. All right, I'm going to do a little back tack there. There we go. All right, so we're going to start sewing here. Back tack, sew all the way down and back tack here. All right, so I'll see you at the sewing machine and we'll get that done. Okay, there we go. I'm going to take out my pins and then we're going to sew the opposite side in exactly the same way. I'm not going to press this. I'm not going to do anything to it. So I'm going to show you what this looks like right now. So I have sewn this to the top like this using my quarter inch start and stop. All right, so I have a large section down here. So these don't match. That's normal. That's exactly what we want. This, this is right, okay? So I'm going to pick up my patchwork and I'm going to bring it to this edge. Okay, so I just kind of let the backing just kind of sit here on the table. I'm just picking this up and moving this together. I'm going to clip that. Okay, we're clipped. Good deal. All right, so now, same as, same as before, we're going to pin this across. Making sure my edges are lined up. We're gonna go ahead and mark our quarter of an inch on the side just like we did on the other side, start and stop, okay? All right, I have a lot of pins in there. I think that'll work. All right, now the other thing that I need to do is I need to leave an opening for turning because we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, sew them all the way up, so I need to leave an opening to turn our project through. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that right now. All right, so I've got this pin, so I know I can safely remove my wonder clip. So that's not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna leave an eight inch opening for turning. All right, so let's kind of pick a nice place here. And I'm gonna mark this. 
for the friction pen. Okay, and then I'm also going to come down here to the other side and I'm going to mark my quarter inch start and stop right here. Okay, should do that a little darker so you can see that on camera. Okay, so this side I have an eight inch opening. I have my start and stop marked on both sides. I'm going to pin, 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 and then I'm going to go to the machine, back tack, sew to this line, and then back tack. I definitely want to reinforce that because I don't want it to come apart when I'm pulling the project through. We're going to back tack here and continue to the end to this mark and back tack again. All right, so I'll do that and I'll see you at the machine. All right, let's trim our threads. Okay, I'm gonna take my pins out and we're gonna do the other sides. Okay, so now this is looking really strange and I know that. So I'm gonna show you what I've got. I've got two sides are connected you can see I do have a large amount and my backing fabric is folded underneath here. That's normal, okay? So now I'm gonna turn it around. Let's work on this side, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna straighten this edge out from the center, I'm just gonna kind of work that backing fabric out because I want him to be flat, right? And I have to match my centers again. So let's do that. So match my clips. There we go, I'm clipped, I'm good. Okay, so now, see these big corners are gonna start to be really floppy on the ends. All right, so start in the center. Don't try to start on this end, which is kind of fussy. Start in the center. That's, you're gonna have the best luck starting right here. So let's pin this. And then this one, just take it one chunk at a time. So I'm just smoothing out a couple inches at a time. I'm not trying to smooth out this whole thing yet. It should all just kind of fall into place when I get there. There it is. Okay. Let's do one more pin right here. Okay, now on this one, I'm gonna hold this up so you can see this. You can see I have my, this is my quarter inch mark where I start and stopped here. But now I can see my thread and I'm actually going to hit that with a friction mark so you can see, come on friction, there we go. That's where my thread is. So that is where I'm going to start and stop now. So I just need to make sure there are no tucks and this is lying completely flat. up in my corner, and it is. You can see on the back, it's nice and flat. On the front, this looks a little funky. That's okay. That's, it's all okay. It's all gonna be all right, okay? I wanna have this weird little corner right here. Okay, so let's go back to the center. Let's replace our clip with a pin, and let's continue pinning all the way along, just like we did on the other side. So again, this looks kind of weird, but we're just gonna leave it. 
and I'm just going to smooth it a little bit at a time. All right, I'm at the corner. I'm just going to hit my stitches with a friction mark so you can see that. That's my start and stop right there. I'm going to make sure this side is nice and flat, and it is. That's what I'm concerned about, is that end is nice and flat, and I'm not going to take a tuck anywhere in this area. So this is looks really strange on top. I'm okay with that. This is the part we need to worry about. It's got to be nice and flat, okay? So I'm going to take this to the machine. I'm going to start here. I sew all the way to the end, end at this quarter inch, stop, back tacking at both sides, all right? You know what, as long as I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and pin my other side. And then I'll just sew them both at the machine. So let's go ahead and do that. So the way I started that is you match your centers. You see now why I have wonder clips on here because if I had pins, I think with all this motion moving these around, I think my pins would have come out. I've not had good luck just putting a little pin in there. I've lost them. Okay, so we've got it clipped in the center and now I'm just gonna do this the same way I did the other one. All right, so we've got that sewn. Let's get these pins out of here. Boy, I put a lot of pins in this. I did not want this moving around on me. I've got more on the other side. All right, now the one thing I have not done is I have not pressed this, and I'm not going to. We're not gonna press this until after we get this turned, all right? No need to press it. Our seams are sewn. This looks really funky right now. Let me show you what this looks like. Okay, so my backing is very loose and you can see I've sewn all the way around and I've got these weird dog ears on the side. All right, let's finish this out. So let's work on one corner at a time and now I'm gonna fold this side to this side. So I'm going to miter this, all right? Now don't worry about the word miter. If you don't miter corners, that's all right. Mitering borders is way different than mitering these little corners like this, all right? So I'm just going to match this seam, this raw edge, to this raw edge, all right? So I'm just going to turn them right sides together. I'm going to make sure this corner is a point. See that? And this lays really nice right together. Shake it a little bit and smooth this out. All right, now I can see my blanket is right here. Can you see that on camera? I think you can. That's my blanket. Here's my backing. All right, now I'm going to use my ruler. This is a Creative Grids 4.5 by 8.5. I'm going to use this 45 degree line on here. Let's use this one. And I'm going to put this along the top edge of my quilt, like this. And I'm sliding this along until I get to right here. And I'm gonna mark this with a friction pen so you can see it. Right there, that's the point I'm looking for. That's where my stitches start and stop. All right, so what I'm trying to do is I'm just gonna light up my ruler, just like that. And I'm gonna draw a line. Okay, 
This is now a sewing line. I'm not going to start out here. I'm going to start on this dot. Again, back tack, down, and back tack. All right. I'm not going to worry that these two points do not match, that these two edges do not match. I'm not going to worry about that. All right, so we're going to put a couple of pins in there. We're going to stitch from here to here, back tacking at both sides. All right, let's go do that. Let's take a look. What I'm going to cut off now is a triangle. And you want to make sure it is a triangle and it's not a square. If this is a square, you have not done this correctly. All right? Don't cut it. All right. So when I cut this, I know I have a triangle. All right? That's what I'm cutting off. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the other three corners in exactly the same way. And then we're going to turn this through and I'm going to show you how amazing this is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and trim these out. I think I got them all. Let's check. I have one more somewhere here. There he is. Okay, let's pick up all the pins. We're gonna need these next. All right, the fun part. Now we get to turn it through. So where'd my opening go? I know it's here somewhere. Aha, here it is. All right, so I'm just gonna reach in and I'm gonna grab a corner and pull this through. my other corner. All right, so now I'm going to use a clover point turner. I love this thing. So now my corners are all out. I'm all turned. Let's see, I've, oh, there's my opening. I lost my opening again. All right, let's take a point turner and now I'm just going to push that corner, push that point right out and you can see how nice that is. Look how beautiful this is. I love that. Let me get my iron heating up. Now I'm going to start pressing this. So let's go through and use the point turner on all four corners. Poke these out. There we go. Being careful not to poke through that flannel. I just want to get that in popped out just so it's a nice sharp point. All I'm looking for right now. I love this point turner. It has a rounded edge for curves and a pointy end and it's not really sharp sharp but it's pointy enough to really get in those corners. Very well used tool at my in my sewing room. All right so now when I go to lay this out I'm just going to run my hands, my fingernails, along the seam. And naturally, the patchwork wants to lay flat. 
the backing is what I'm going to push. And you can see how that backing, that seam is just going to lay right there. So now my excess border or backing has come around and made a nice border on this blanket. All right, so let's go ahead and just give this a little press. I have the Panasonic cordless iron with me on set today. I really like this iron. Just kind of straighten everybody out. There we go. I'm just going to press this corner out. Okay. All right, so here we are at the opening. So as you can see, the patchwork is laying flat, and that's good. So now I'm just going to take this opening, and I'm just going to turn it a quarter of an inch under, just like this, and set it right where I want it. I'm just going to press this in place. Bring my iron with me here. Give it a little steam. That'll help it lay flat, just like that. All right, I'm going to use one of these cool pins because now I'm going through multiple layers here. These are cool pins by the Gypsy Quilter. They are heat proof, so if you need to press again, don't worry about getting your iron right on that. This is heat proof. I love that. All right, so I'm going to put some pins there. Now let's talk about how to finish this off. So here's what our blanket looks like. How adorable is this? I just love how quick and easy this is. So how I finished this one was I found a wavy stitch on the sewing machine on the Berninas, and that's stitch number four. If you have a Bernina, check it out. It probably stitch number four. It's a wavy stitch. Okay, my settings were 1.0 for the length and 5.0 for the width. Now, I found that setting just by playing on my machine, just by playing with it and just seeing how wide that wavy stitch would go. But I love this little wavy stitch on here. I think it's just cute. It finishes it off. I'm not trying to sew a perfect uh, straight seam. It's very forgiving, and that I love. So I went ahead and carried the wavy stitch. And actually, you can see it better from the back. I went ahead and stitched all of my seam allowances down. I think that really reinforces this, this cute little blanket, and I know it can be washed many, many, many times, and it's not going to fall apart. That's how I finished this quilt. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Please show me pictures of what you've made. I would love to see your receiving blankets that you're doing for your treasured little ones. I hope to see you again on another Shabby Fabrics video.